This video addresses part of the 5th grade math standard of solving word problems involving fractions with unlike denominators, specifically understanding benchmark fractions like one half and using your number sense to decide the reasonableness of an answer. Okay, before we get into fractions, I'm going to give you a whole number example to clarify. Is 34 plus 25 more than 100? How do you know without solving? Well, the answer is no, it's not. I don't even have to solve it, and here's how I know. In order to get 100, I need 50 plus 50. Well, neither 34 nor 25 is 50 or more, so the answer can't possibly be 100. Working with benchmark fractions is very much the same. Where they differ is here. Hmm. Instead of saying, is it more or less than 100, we're saying, is it more or less than one whole? And to judge that, instead of saying, well, are the parts more or less than 50, we're saying not 50, but one half. Are the parts more or less than one half? Are the fractions more or less than one half? And that's where we use our benchmark fraction sense. Okay, but how do we know whether a fraction is bigger than or less than one half? Well, let's take a look at some fractions. We know that one half plus one half equals one whole. So if you have a fraction that's less than half, another fraction that's less than half, you know that you're never going to get one whole. Likewise, if they're both greater than half, you're going to get an answer that's greater than one whole. Let's start with an easy example of 5 eighths. Well, we know what half of 8 is. Half of 8 is 4. So therefore, this is greater than 1 half. Uh, I'm going to give you two strategies. The first one's a visual strategy. Okay, let's look at 5 eighths on the number line. If we move it up there, and we shade 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you can see that you're more than halfway there. Therefore, it's larger than half. All right, but what about 3 sevenths? Let's go ahead and move our 3 sevenths up there, and let's shade it in. 1, 2, 3. Notice that on our number line, it's not quite the half, so we know that it's less than half. Also, there are less boxes shaded in than aren't shaded. So if there's less boxes shaded in than aren't shaded, we know that we're not quite halfway there. All right, what about 4 fifths? Again, let's go ahead and draw our picture, and let's shade our fractions. 1, 2, 3, 4. As you can see, we've shaded past 1 half. Therefore, 4 fifths is greater than 1 half. 3 sevenths was smaller than 1 half. 4 fifths is greater than. And using the symbols, we'd say 5 eighths is greater than half. 3 sevenths is less than half. And 4 fifths is greater than 1 half. All right, I'm going to show you another strategy yes. uh, that doesn't involve pictures. Let's go back to something that we know is equal to 1 half. So let's go to 2 fourths. Well, if we double 2, we get 4. Notice how that's equal to the denominator. So if you double the numerator and it's equal to the denominator, you know it's equal to 1 half. Let's do a couple more examples. 7 elevenths. Okay, well if I double 7, I get 14. 14 does not fit into 11, so therefore we know that 7 elevenths is greater than half. And then over here, 1 third. Well, if we double 1, we get 2. And we know that 2 fits into 3. It's less than 3. So therefore, 1 third is less than half. And lastly, 3 sixths. If we double 3, we get 6. Those are equal, so this must be equal to 1 half. Again, there are many strategies you could use. These are two of them that I am offering this video. Normally, when solving this kind of problem, you would make common denominators between 7 and 5. However, if all you're searching for is, is this answer going to be more than or less than 1, then we should use our fractional number sense. Let's take a look at 3 sevenths. Double 3, we get 6. Well, that fits in 7, so we know that 3 sevenths is less than half. 1 fifth, double 1, we get 2. 2 fits into 5, so we know that 1 fifth is less than half. If we know that 3 sevenths is less than half, and we know that 1 fifth is less than half, there's no way that it can equal one whole. We know it's going to be less than one whole. Some might be asking, but why wouldn't you want the exact answer? Well, sometimes the exact answer isn't needed. You don't need to know exactly how much, you just need to know, do I have enough? Let's take Shirley, for example. Shirley needs one pound of candy for her party. She believes she has enough for three-sevenths of a pound of licorice and one-fifth of a pound of gumdrops. Why is she incorrect? 
Well, from the previous page, we saw that three sevenths was less than half, and one fifth is less than half. So when we add them together, it's going to be less than one whole pound. So she is incorrect because these two fractions are less than half, therefore she can't possibly have enough for her party. Let's take a look at Bob. Bob can only fit one gallon of water in his thermos. He has a pitcher that is one half of a gallon full, and another pitcher that is five ninths of a gallon full. Explain why it will fit or why it will not fit. All right, well, let's take a look at our fractions. We have one half, which is equal to one half, and we have five ninths. Hmm, boy, is that more or less than one half? Well, if we double five, we get 10. That does not fit into nine, so we know that five ninths is greater than one half. So we have something that's equal to one half and something that's greater than one half. Well, no, it will not fit. It's going to overflow. So to recap, you can determine the reasonable distance of an answer by knowing whether or not the fractions are greater than or less than half. And I'm giving you two strategies to figure that out. Look at both fractions, determine whether they are larger or smaller, and that will give you a good idea as to whether your answer is going to be larger or smaller than one whole.